Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to a 2024 election ranking the least important state all the way to the most important. It's called like the tipping point on this. I normally like doing these videos on the weekend where I just kind of recap different things or go over different election trends with all 50 states. The recent stuff, this is just the thing that I was able to find in terms of the forecaster. Trump sitting at a 47% chance. You've got Kamala around 53. There has been a slightly positive move for Trump. This is just based off the forecasting, of course, but this is really what I wanted to talk about. It is the overall tipping point, which is the most important state in the 2024 election. So we'll go from least important to most important. And they do also offer projected margins of each of these states. A lot of this is based off of how lopsided a state is along with limited electoral votes. So they're saying the least important state, or I guess district, because they also do have the district here, the con congressional districts, it is Wyoming. Wyoming with three electoral votes. Trump expected to win it possibly by around 46 points. That is going to be a guaranteed Trump victory. We know that. Also, West Virginia, four electoral votes. Trump going to win that by around 40 points. Vermont with three electoral votes. The Democrats expected to win that by around 31 you do have South Dakota with three electoral votes. Of course, Trump winning that by around 25 to 30. Oklahoma with seven electoral votes, but it's all the way down here because it's just not a competitive state. There's so many states that are not competitive. Obviously, Trump's going to win that. North Dakota and its three electoral votes, Trump will be winning. You've got Nebraska's third congressional district. I'm surprised that's, why would that be this high in terms of influence? It's only one electoral vote in Trump's going to win it by like 56 points just because it's like a district and it's got a lot of Republican people. We're very rural, I would guess. You do have Maine's first district, Democrats, heavily favorites to heavy favorites to, that, to win that one. Idaho, Republicans, Trump possibly winning it by 34 points. You've got the District of Columbia. Of course, it's three electoral votes. We would expect uh, Harris to win that by around 84 points, maybe get like 92% of the vote or something. Arkansas, Trump easily going to win it. It's got six electoral votes or by around 30 points. All of these states, you can see less than 0.1% in terms of actually affecting the election just because these are all guarantees. Alabama, Trump expected to win by around 30 points. Nebraska's first district, it's only single electoral vote. Trump's expected to win it. That's the one where it's kind of interesting. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's a lock for Trump. You've got Nebraska at large. Trump going to win that one very easily. You do have Maryland at large, just the state, 10 electoral votes. Democrats obviously going to win that one. Tennessee, 11 electoral votes. Republicans going to win that one. Massachusetts, Biden probably going to win it by around, or excuse me, Harris probably going to win it by around 30 points. Kentucky going to easily go to Trump. Utah easily going to go to Trump. Although remember 2016 with McMuffin. Indiana should go to Trump easily. Mississippi, Montana, Louisiana, all going to Trump. Delaware, that was one when people thought, well, if Biden drops out, it could be a swing state. It's probably not going to be. Not that it really matters because it's three electoral votes, but you can see it's about a 15 point margin just based off of averages. I think they're taking averages from 2016 and 2020 mainly. And then if there's any, any polling, but with all of these states, I haven't seen a single poll out of really any of these states down here that I just went over. But I mean, I can't remember a poll. Maybe there was a North Dakota poll once that I saw like three months ago. I don't really remember. Maybe there was a Tennessee poll like two months ago, but there's just not a lot of polling because these states are going to, there's also Montana polls. That's because of the Senate race. But yeah, if Trump, this is a big state, Montana, because if Trump can win it by 17 or 18, it would be shocking if, if Tester was able to win that uh, Senate race and, and we would expect the Republicans to pick up a seat there. But all these other ones, Delaware, you could maybe argue would be the first one that could be a swing state, but it's unlikely. California, the reason it's this high, it's just because it's got 54 electoral votes. It's going to be very influential, but it's not going to matter. I mean, the Democrats have such an amazing advantage with 54 electoral votes getting that for, I mean, for you know, I guess not for free, but they're ob obviously it's not a competitive state. You do have Kansas, six electoral votes. Kansas is interesting because Democrats think it's it's trending to the left. I mean, does it really matter? It's six electoral votes. I mean, I guess it does because it's like the same as Nevada, but obviously Kansas is kind of like Montana. Trump should win it by like 17 or 18. Hawaii, Democrats easily going to win that. Maybe if Trump picked Tulsi Gabbard, <laughs> I'm kidding. 
New York. I remember New York, possibly. There were a few polls with New York that had Trump within single digits. I think he'll probably lose it all by a lot less than 18. That's based off of like previous years. Because New York, we saw in 2022, it was trending to the right. I think Trump probably loses it by about 12 or 13 points. That's really good news if that's able to happen. You do also have Ro or Connecticut and Rhode Island, very similar states, both going to be Democratic states. Missouri, I heard some Democrats talking about Missouri possibly being a swing state. Obviously, it's not going to happen. South Carolina is also a Republican state. Maine's second district. This was the one that was kind of eh, probably going to go to Trump, like an 80% chance. It's only one electoral vote, but it is important. Trump uh, or Republicans got around eight point margin right there. Alaska is going to go for Trump. Only three electoral votes. Washington should safely go to the Democrats around a 15 point margin. Illinois probably going to be a little bit less than 14. I think we're going to see trends with these bigger states. Even California, I think, is going to be a little bit less in terms of margin. Illinois might be around a 10 point, 11 point victory. That would be pretty big for Trump. If, if a Republican gets it within single digits or around there in Illinois, but you're starting to see states that are a little bit more meaningful here. Oregon, very likely going to the Democrats, possibly under 10 there really hasn't been many polls recently, but it wouldn't surprise me if we saw some polls with Harris up by like 12 or 13. It's probably going to safely go to the Democrats. You also have Maine at large. That could be, you, you could say it's a toss up, maybe the first toss up on this. Uh, you can see Democrat right now margin 6.2, but it'll just depend on the polls. I would expect Harris. Yes, she does have a bit of a lead there just based off of previous election years. You do also have Iowa which is not a swing state anymore. Trump should win that, I think, by a lot more than 10 points. He'll probably win it by like 15 or 16, I would say. That would be my guess on Iowa. But the states are starting to become a little bit more impactful. New Jersey, that would be crazy if Trump somehow won that. Very unlikely, obviously. New Jersey likely going to be going to the Democrats. There were a few internal polls from Biden. And, and apparently Nancy Pelosi, it's come out now that she was threatening to release more internal polls to embarrass Biden. That's how toxic, toxic that relationship got. That just came out today. So I mean, New Jersey, I could see it being a six or a seven point state. If, if Trump loses New Jersey by six points, he's going to win this election. I mean, that's a, a state like New Jersey. Nebraska second district, that's a pure toss up. Biden barely won it in 2020. Trump barely won it in 2016. I think Trump takes it back from Kamala in 2024. They've got it as like a two-point margin of victory for the Democrats. Ohio, you know, in previous years, Ohio would be a lot higher having 17 electoral votes, but now it is definitely more of a Republican state. I would agree with that, plus 9.9. .9. Trump's won it by eight points the previous two years. I think he probably wins it by 10 or 11. It's big because we'll see if Trump can help Moreno in Ohio, if he wins by around nine or ten, I think he, uh, I think Moreno easily gets pushed over the finish line thanks to Trump and the down ballot voting. Uh, you do have New Hampshire with its four electoral votes, could be relatively close. Probably another one of those states that's going to be. I mean, you, I, I will say New Mexico and New Hampshire are similar, similar in terms of electoral votes, similar in terms of margin, similar in terms of they're really not pulled very much. New Mexico, there were some polls that were very close, but it's just unlikely based on trends and how partisan we are that those states would flip. You do also have Colorado and its 10 electoral votes, probably going to be a Democrat state, fairly safely, nine points. I think, I mean, I think in 2020, it was like 16 points or something. So that'd be a really good trend for Trump, or maybe it was 10 points, I forget. But now we're getting to what I think everyone would classify. Well, maybe, because what liberals will say is Virginia and Minnesota are not swing states, but you could say all of these states up here are the swing states. And in terms of well, this isn't technically in terms of most important because it's based off of margins as well. Like Minnesota and its 10 electoral votes would be a lot higher if it was closer. But what happened with Minnesota is really interesting. It was like tied. Trump had worked it all the way back. There were a few polls that came out in like March. It was Biden plus two, Biden plus three. And then several polls came out that were tied between Trump and Biden. And then Kamala takes over and they immediately do snap polls in Minnesota. And there were two polls. One of them was Fox News. One of them was like Survey USA. And one had Harris up by six and then Harris up by 10. So that's why Minnesota really isn't being talked about much. And you could also say, you could also say Waltz being from Minnesota, although they really, he's not going to really add much. It's like J.D. Vance being from Ohio. He's not really going to take, oh, a seven-point victory and turn it into a 12-point victory. He's just a partisan dude who's just really, I mean, not liked by Republicans, so it's not like he's going to change a lot. So Minnesota, probably, you would have to say, you know, pretty, pretty certain right now leaning to the left, although there's only been a few polls. You do also have Nevada. Right now, they've got it as basically a tie. 
It is only six electoral votes, but based on the margin, it is an extremely important state. I would say Trump leads in Nevada right now decently. You you know, we've seen some polls recently that have Trump up by four or five in Nevada, and he's always led the state against Biden or against Harris. You do also have Virginia. So that's another state we're waiting on polls from. There were some good news about the paper ballots with Glenn Youngkin. Glenn Youngkin obviously winning in Virginia shows you that a Republican can win. But in 2020, Biden won it by like 10 points. He won it very easily. It's 13 electoral votes. If we get some polls and they're close, that's going to be huge for Trump. Force the Democrats to have rallies in Virginia. Force them to defend it, especially with Glenn Youngkin and how liked he is. Bipartisan, independent people like him. That could be big for Trump. You're going to have Youngkin and Trump probably doing a rally in Virginia, as long as it's within three or four points, or at least, you know, five points, that's a state you can invest some resources in. I mean, it's more electoral votes than Arizona. So let's say you lose Arizona. Everyone talks about how big Arizona is, but you win Virginia. That That is a potential path right there. You do have Arizona right now as basically a tie, and it's obviously a very impactful state. I would say Trump probably should win Arizona, at least based off of the polling numbers that I have seen. You do also have Texas. So this is kind of funny. I mean, this is based off of the fact that Texas is 40 electoral votes and technically Trump is probably only going to win it by, I mean, I think probably more than 8.5, probably around 10 points. But with Texas, it's been the same thing the past three polling cycles now. In 2016, they thought it was going to be like a four or three point victory. I think Trump won it by like six or seven. And then 2020, people kind of gave up on it. The libs did. Trump won it fairly easily. And now it's not It's not really anything to, wor- to be too worried about. There was the whole migration from California to Texas with liberals moving in. And possibly, I mean, you've got big cities in Texas for sure, big population. You think maybe they could flip it. They're not going to. It's really stabilized for Republicans at this point. Florida, obviously the huge one that went from a swing state to a Republican state, mainly thank to, thanks to DeSantis and what he did. I mean, he won the state by 20 points in 2022. If a Republican wins it by 20 points uh, on the national level, there's just no way. They've got it at a five-point victory. That's not that's not a correct margin. That's based off a of previous like 2020 and 2016 and also maybe an erroneous recent poll that had Trump only up by three. I think Trump wins that state by about nine, 10 points. Very similar to Ohio. Very similar margin with Florida and Ohio. You do also have Wisconsin. So now you're getting into like the top five most important states and we get to the Rust Belt, of course. So Wisconsin, it's 10 electoral votes. Right now they've got, I mean, I think Trump is in great position to win Wisconsin. They do have it right now as a Democrat, very slight lean, but it is still a toss up. It is gonna be an extremely important state. You do have Georgia right now sitting as the fourth most important state. I would even argue it could be higher just based off of margins. I mean, look at all these, they all have similar electoral votes, but Georgia right now, Republican plus two, and Georgia's huge. I mean, I think Georgia's underrated because we thought it was going to be, I mean, it was a Republican state, let's just be honest. It's an SEC state. And then the Atlanta numbers with Fulton County and DeKalb County and just the crazy rampant ballot harvesting operation with all the inner city people. And it was just unbelievable to have something like that happen again, especially now that people in Georgia know that their state was turned From red to blue, I think Trump's going to have a big advantage in that state. Although, to be fair, Kamala's numbers recently have been a lot better than Biden's in Georgia. Trump was routinely winning Georgia in every poll by like five or six points. It's it's been a little bit different. North Carolina, I would disagree with this. This is just based off a polling average, obviously. They've got North Carolina as the third most important state. I would definitely move North Carolina down just because I think Trump's going to win it. Now, technically, you can't say it's a guarantee based off polls, but if you compare Trump's polling numbers this year in North Carolina to 2020 and 2016, he was losing North Carolina by four points both years. He ends up winning the state both times. So Trump's won North Carolina. It has been a swing state in 2020 and 2016. It has been close victories for Trump, but now based off of all the different internal metrics, including, you know, I mean, what is this thing doing? It's like dancing. It keeps doing these updates. It's it's just distracting me. Um, but, uh, let me move that right there. But when it comes to North Carolina, I would say that this is a five or maybe a four or five point victory. It's going to be a close state. It's going to be maybe a 4.3 point victory for Trump. That's what I would predict right now for North Carolina. Michigan's going to be probably pretty tough for Trump. It's probably going to be tough based off of Waltz and, and, you know, not picking Shapiro. Although I'm, I'm glad she picked Waltz. Don't get me wrong. 
But that could be a state that could be tough for Trump. Not that he needs the state, especially if he takes the number one most important state, which we would agree is Pennsylvania. If I was ranking these, I would say Pennsylvania for sure. When you look at all the pure swing states, Pennsylvania by far has the most electoral votes. It is the most important state. That doesn't mean Trump needs to win that state to win the election. I think Kamala probably does. Technically, she she could win both Michigan and Wisconsin, and then take Georgia and North Carolina and then win that way. But I think the Democrats probably do need to win Pennsylvania. If Trump wins Pennsylvania, I think it's pretty much in the bag for him because that's just such a huge state for him. And just based off of the math and how it works this year with Florida and Ohio both being pure Republican states, it's going to make it a lot easier. But I would say, yeah, Pennsylvania is the most important state. I would put Georgia number two, honestly, because I view Georgia as a pure toss-up. I would have Michigan number three. Then I would probably have, you could argue Arizona, then Wisconsin, and possibly Virginia after that. I just don't know the polls right now in Virginia. Nevada is going to be down a bit because it's only six electoral votes, but it would be something like that. So I think Pennsylvania for sure is number one. I'd say Georgia for sure is number two. I mean, they've got it as like a 9%. You see the tipping point. I mean, Pennsylvania's double over the next one. It is a very important state. I wonder what happens when you click on these. Does it show the polling? Yeah, it does. See, this is just like, what is this? Like some of these things, it's like, it, what 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 polling metrics are you getting to where she's up by 10 in Pennsylvania? What polls are you looking at? I, I'm sorry, that's just, it's not fundamentals, polling weight, state similarity. I mean, how are the, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, they do have the projected margin as only a point, but I'm saying this polling right here is not correct. There's no way it's 45, 55 to 45. I don't know what polls they're taking into account. Not that it matters too much. Not that it matters too much. I will say that that is interesting in terms of the weight, how they weight these. Polling, 66%. It's tied. Fundamentals, 28%. Republican plus five. State similarity index, Republicans plus two. What is state similarity? Like based off of how they did in previous years? Based off of demographics? Oh, here you got the election history. This is all the election history on how everything went. And I don't know what this is. This is some type of metric based on how similar states are, I guess. But I mean, they do have a lot of different things. I'm like, oh, this is pretty in-depth stuff here. But when it comes to this, yeah, I would say, and you can see this is like a weird simulation that they have running constantly. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's got her barely losing Tennessee in that simulation. She wins again. Trump with a nice victory. He wins Virginia in that one. All right, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this, but... Um, you can see just based off of this, where do they have the electoral votes? I mean, the electoral votes are very close. They've got them very close. So, and they've got all these states. You could go through all of them, but uh, that's just when it comes to the most important state. It is Pennsylvania. I would say Pennsylvania, number one. I would say Georgia, number two. You could say possibly Michigan, number three, depending on, I mean, I think it's a, yeah, it's a pure swing state. Come on. Wisconsin's up there. Arizona's up there. Virginia possibly could be up there. I'd like to see the metrics on Virginia. Oh, this is based off a percent chance to win. It's not based off a of polling. That makes more sense. Yeah, so they've got Harris. I mean, you can see how it started. That's because, I mean, this is probably, there's just been no polls, but how it started, it was, I mean, because this was Trump doing well against Biden in Virginia. So Trump had like a, almost a 50% chance to win Virginia. And I think because Harris started doing well in other polls, it pushed her up, like in Minnesota. And that's probably why. But uh, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.